If you're trying to decide what the best self-taping camera is for your auditions and you want to see some self-tape audition examples using multiple cameras, then you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to compare four different cameras for self-taping, starting with a cell phone and ending with a $2,500 camera. Let's get started. <laughs> What's up my fellow actors? Welcome to the Acting Career Center, here to help you learn the skills you need to break into the film and television industry. My name is Kurt Yu. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If this is your first time here, make sure to subscribe to this channel to get more videos on acting, auditioning, and career advice every single week. Today we're going to be talking about what the best self-taping camera is for our auditions. How does your cell phone stack up against a camcorder and how do those two compare with even higher end cameras? By the way, let me know down in the comments what camera you are currently using for your self-tapes, whether it's a phone or anything else. Now before we get started, I want to mention that I've put together a self-taping resource list on my website that covers all the different tools that you'll need to self-tape your auditions. That's cameras and tripods, lights, microphones, editing software, we cover all of it. So you'll find a link to that resource list down in the description below. Okay, let's talk about the four cameras that we're gonna be testing today. The first camera is my cell phone, which is a Google Pixel 3. We'll be using the back-facing camera because on most phones, the back camera has better quality than the front camera. Next, we will be looking at this $250 camcorder, which is a Canon Vixia R800. After that, we'll be testing the camera we're using right now to record this video, which is a Canon 80D DSLR camera that runs around $900 with the kit lens. And finally, we'll be looking at this Sony A7 III, which is a full frame mirrorless camera that runs about $1,900 but I have a $600 lens on here, so the whole package costs about $2,500. All right, I'm gonna play all four clips for you back to back, starting with my cell phone, and then the camcorder, then the Canon 80D, and then last, the Sony a7 III. Now, I've tried to make everything the same for each camera, so every camera is gonna be on a tripod, we're in the same room using the same background. It's actually this background right behind me. We're using the same lights. I've even tried to frame each clip exactly the same. So let's take a look. You have 48 hours. Get Tyson back here or get another job. You have 48 hours. Get Tyson back here or get another job. You have 48 hours. Get Tyson back here or get another job. You have 48 hours. Get Tyson back here or get another job. Okay, the first thing you may have noticed is that there is a little bit of color variation between each clip, and that's totally normal. That's nothing to really worry about. I could have gone in and tweaked the white balance for each camera to get them looking closer together, but I did want you to see that the cameras are a little bit different. As long as I'm not looking green or purple, it's totally fine. So just understand that those color variations between the clips are very normal. The next thing that you you might have noticed is that the sound is a little bit different in the clip from my cell phone compared to the other. You have 48 hours. Get Tyson back here or get another job. And that's because when I used my phone, I just used the microphone that was on the phone. And when I used the other three cameras, I used this Tackstar shotgun microphone connected to each camera. That's because this the microphone is great and it makes the, the video sound great, but it just doesn't really work that well with my phone. And I haven't found a great external microphone that's worked well with my cell phone. That's why I just used the onboard uh, mic. And that's why you're hearing a little bit of an echo in that video compared to the other three. Okay, let's talk about video quality. I think the Sony a7 III came in head and shoulders above every other camera. I think the uh, image quality overall and then the sharpness was clearly better than the other three. But that's understandable, right? It's a $2,500 package here and you kind of get what you pay for. The next one, I think, is the Canon 80D, which is the camera we're using right now. The image is not quite as good as the Sony, but I really have no complaints about it. I really like the video quality of this camera. This is actually the camera that I use to record all of my auditions. The last 
four or five hundred auditions that I've done, I've been using this Canon 80D. So I really do like this quality of, of the image. Now, once we get to the last two, this cell phone and this camcorder, I think this is interesting because I do think the video on my Google Pixel 3 is better than the camcorder. I think it's a little bit sharper and I kind of like the contrast more. So that's really interesting that this one kind of came in last as far as sharpness and overall quality of the video. But I think it is important that there are some other things to consider other than just the sharpness of the video. So let's take a screenshot of each of the four clips and put them side by side and look at them. Hey, if you're liking this video so far, give it a thumbs up. All right, let's look at this screenshots here. Okay, so what I want you to look at here is look at the top left image, which is the image from my cell phone video. Notice that the shape of my head in this clip is slightly different than the shape of my head in any of the other clips. You can see that my head looks a little bit more oval in the cell phone shot than in the other three. The other three, it looks a little bit more kind of like a rounded square, which really is the real shape of my head. But the reason that the, my head looks a little bit more oval here, there, there is a reason for this. And that is that with all three of these cameras, the field of view of this lens is more narrow. Whereas the lens on a cell phone is a wide angle lens. So if this, let's say this camera sees a field of view like this, this camera sees a field of view much wider. Why does that make a difference? Well, that's because I can put this camera further away and stand further back to get this framing. Whereas with a cell phone camera, to get the same framing, I need to be much closer. So when I was recording with this camera, it was only about a foot and a half or two feet away because it has the wide angle lens. And when it is that close, when you're using a wide angle lens, that close to your face, it makes a little bit of distortion. That's the distortion that you're seeing in these images. That's why my face looks a little bit more oval in this clip or in this screenshot. That's why you can also see that even my nose in the cell phone screenshot looks a little bit bigger than it does in the other three. Also, take a look at my hair in that shot. It almost looks like I have a different haircut than the other shots. It looks like my hair is sticking up a little bit more, but I shot all of these clips back to back to back. I didn't change my hair or anything. We shot them all in within like three minutes of each other, but that's the distortion that's happening in this lens. It makes everything look just a little bit different than it would in any of the other cameras. Now, is this a deal breaker? Absolutely not. This is not gonna be a reason why anybody dismisses your audition. Casting directors or your agents are not gonna throw out, throw out your audition because of that little distortion that's happening in your cell phone. But it is something to think about because if you are watching your audition clips off your cell phone and you're not really look, liking how your face looks in it, maybe you're thinking, man, my nose looks a little bit big in this video, that could be a reason why, and that could be a reason why you would consider switching to a different camera. There's another thing that I want you to look at in the cell phone screenshot is that you can see a little bit of a shadow behind me in that screenshot compared to the other three. The other three that you don't see any shadow at all. And that is also due to the fact that we're using a wide angle lens on the cell phone. When we're using any of these three cameras, again, I said the camera was all the way back against the wall. I was about six feet away from it and I'm about four feet away from the wall when we were shooting this. I was basically standing in the middle of the room. Now with the phone, because the phone had a wider range of view, I didn't wanna get all this junk in the background. So I had to be standing closer to the wall and I had to be closer to the camera. That's why we were seeing some distortion and because I was closer to the wall, that's why we were seeing a little bit of shadow. Once again, that little amount of shadow in a video is not a deal breaker. It's totally fine and it's totally acceptable. But if given the choice, I would choose one of the cameras that doesn't show any shadow and doesn't distort my face at all. 
Okay, so what are the conclusions of this test? Well, clearly the Sony a7 III had the best video quality of all four cameras, but I don't think most people are gonna be spending $2,500 on a self-taping camera. So let's just push this one aside. The next in terms of quality was the Canon 80D, which is the camera we're using right now. But again, that's a $900 camera kit, and I don't think most people are gonna be spending that either. I will say though, Canon makes the Canon SL3, which is a camera that's very similar to the ADD in terms of specs and creates video quality pretty much just as good. I don't have an SL3, but I know friends of mine that do and their audition videos look great. So I would recommend that camera. It's about $300 cheaper than the Canon ADD, so it runs about $600. So if you have the funds for that, that might be one of the ones to consider. Now, the final question is, and I think most people are kind of in this boat, is whether or not to use their cell phone or maybe spend like $250 and get a camcorder. This is where we're kind of trying to figure out how to balance the trade-offs, right? As we saw, at least with my cell phone, the Pixel 3 had a little bit better image quality than the camcorder. Not a lot, but a little bit better but the camcorder didn't really distort the video, right? So which one would you choose? I'll tell you what I would choose. If, again, if I had the funds to buy a $250 camera, would I buy it or would I just use my phone? I would actually buy the camera and use this for my auditions, and I'll tell you why. And it actually doesn't have as much to do with the distortion of this lens. The reason is, I, I get a lot of auditions. I audition two to three times a week, and I like the convenience of having a dedicated camera for my auditions. I like to be able to walk into my audition room, turn on the camera, and I'm ready to go. I don't have to do change any more settings. I don't have to change any of the framing to get it right. If I were using my phone, which I have in the past, I would always have to set it up and mess with all the settings again. And then when I was done, I would have to take the camera back off the tripod and put it in my pocket because I need my phone for the rest of the day. So the convenience of just being able to walk in, turn it on and be ready to go is the reason why I would buy a, a dedicated camera. But that's not to say that a phone is not good enough. If you don't wanna be spending any extra money or you don't necessarily have the funds, your phone is absolutely good enough to record a high quality audition video. As you could see, the video looks very professional coming out of a cell phone. It is not a video that a casting director or an agent is gonna throw out in the trash. So if the reason that you clicked on this video was to decide whether or not your phone was gonna be good enough, it probably is. Even if you don't have my phone, most of the newer phones have very high quality cameras. As long as you know how to use them, you're gonna get really good audition videos out of them. All right, that is it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them down down in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many as I can. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and check out that link of self-taping tools that I've put down in the description below. All right, until next time, keep practicing, keep learning, and I hope to see you on set one day.